Thank you very much for the introduction. So my name is Alvaro and I come from Madrid, from Universidad Carlos III de Madrid, uh, where I carried out most of the research I'm going to show in this presentation with the help of uh, my supervisors, Mario Merino and Eduardo Aedo, and all the researchers uh, from Universidad Carlos III de Madrid, and also um, the French Aerospace Lab um, Onega. And finally, I will show some results also uh, performing collaboration with PPPL staff where I'm doing my current uh, postdoc. So moving on to the contents of this presentation, I will introduce you to the background of, the, of this talk, which is electric propulsion and the ECR thruster. Um, I will talk about the, um, the solver of electromagnetic waves in this kind of thrusters that I developed during the thesis and then how I coupled this um, solver to a plasma transport module um, in order to obtain couple simulations. So I obtained a uh, couple simulations of the whole thruster and we were able to validate the results with, I mean, partially validate the results uh, of this code. And finally, I will show you our attempts to make uh, further simulations also with petra uh, at uh, PPPL facilities. Um, and we, we have just started. So uh, moving on to the electric propulsion. Electric propulsion is um, an alternate uh, to the generation of, uh, of a propulsion system. So it's a different type of technology for providing propulsive means in space, uh, which is more efficient or makes more efficient use of the propellant that you're carrying to space. Uh, most mature technologies, for instance, the whole effect thruster or the, or the ion thruster, they uh, exploit the use of electrodes, uh, which are erosion component, uh, components that are, suffer a lot from erosion. And this can impact a lot the thruster lifetime. So a new category of thrusters appears, uh, which are based on radio frequency thruster, uh, radio frequency coupling. And this coupling, it's, uh, it's a new and novel uh, concept. So we, did, we need to develop uh, new tools for the solution of the electromagnetic waves in these kind of uh, problems. We can see different uh, prototypes like the VASMIR, the helicon plasma thruster on, or the ECR thruster, which use different uh, power coupling mechanisms for its operation. And depending on which you're using, your your different requirements. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to focus in the development of the ECR thruster, which um, um, in the meridian section of this uh, thruster can be seen like this. Um, we basically feed some electromagnetic power through a coaxial line or waveguide uh, to the thruster chamber through a dielectric window. And then we have some electromagnetics, uh, some electromagnets or permanent magnets uh, to generate the means for uh, providing the uh, ECR region where we are going to tackle or we're going to try to ionize the propellant by the um, energization of the electrons. Uh, so the ECR resonance is the is a cyclotronic, uh, sorry, is a, is a resonant mechanism that couples cyclotron gyro motion, uh, electron cyclotron um, gyro motion with the waves frequency. So when these frequencies match, we are able to energize these species. And therefore we are able to generate the plasma and uh, through the means of this magnetic nozzle that is also provided by the electromagnets, we're able to uh, accelerate the electrons and also the ions that's providing the thrust. So our problem uh, is now we need to solve um, uh, for the electromagnetic wave uh, solutions in this kind of configuration, this kind of topology. These thrusters are very small in the order of centimeters, but uh, there are other higher power versions. So we, we need to take care of this problem and we decided to develop an axisymmetric time harmonic Maxwell's equation solver. I call it Attains, which solves Maxwell's inhomogeneous wave equation in weak form um, in a 2D axisymmetric ge um, geometry. Um, and we basically uh, used a finite element method to obtain solutions based on mixed basis formulation. Um, 
the code is uh, written in C++ and we apply, and this is where we employ the great capabilities of FEM discretization library. Um, this has also been used in other uh, disciplines like Fusion, um, where they're, they have developed uh, Petra-M, uh, the physics equations translation uh, for MFEM. And it basically what we're trying to solve is plasma that has um, a tensor, which is inhomogeneous and anisotropic. And we have several boundary conditions, for instance, the perfect electric conductor, perfect magnetic conductor, and also the symmetry axis. We make use of uh, structure grids, and this is one of the main advantages that we find for our application, because we are capable of describing complex geometries, and also um, it provides with means of making predictive mesh refinement so that we can uh, refine in the locations where we need more resolution. Since we have um, uh, fields collapsed in a very small volume, so we have um, uh, different bounding surfaces depending on the plasma parameters that will define these regions. For instance, the ECR is the electron cycloton resonance, and we have other types of resonance in this geometry, like the upper hybrid, and this will also uh, play a role. So we need to take care of those. So the mathematical formulation. Basically, the waveform of um, Maxwell's inhomogeneous wave equation. Uh, we have uh, used Kalarkin method uh, in our approach, and we are going to expand uh, harmonically in the azimuthal direction with mode number M, uh, all the fields basically, and we uh, discretize uh, using a combination of uh, Nedelec elements and Lagrange elements. Uh, basically, Nedelec vector elements will be used for the in-plane components, and out-of-plane components, we'll, we will deal with them with the uh, novel elements. So this is quite uh, standard. Um, we, with the use of MFEM, we were able to uh, obtain all the operators for the different mode numbers. Um, uh, here I saw all the specific um, operators needed. And uh, here I uh, I show you that the axisymmetric boundary conditions required for the solutions uh, depend on the mode number. So therefore, um, we need different discretization as well um, to fulfill these boundary conditions. We just need to impose um, Neumann boundary condition for the in-plane fields and uh, just a Dirichlet boundary condition or PC for the auto component, out of uh, the normal components, so the azimuthal fields. We uh, carried out some verification of the code. Part of this verification was uh, using was performed using the method of manufacturer solutions. Um, so basically, we generate an analytical forcing term, uh, analytical solution, and then we obtain the forcing terms. Then uh, we fit this forcing term to the numerical solution of, of the problem. Uh, and then we can compare, obtain errors. And we uh, got to see that the error convergence um, was uh, going with the order of the element chosen. Here you can see the tangential field and here the azimuthal field. And we can see that the um, for order two elements, we have order two convergence and order uh, three for the uh, auto plane. So predictive mesh refinement was a feature that we really needed uh, to tackle, I mean, to improve the computational cost, so reduce the computational cost of the solutions. Um, and specifically the one feature that appeared in when we were using uniform meshes, close to specific boundaries or specific regions of parametric space. Um, these regions feature some past oscillations, uh, which has been seen already in similar problems in the, the treatment of the slow wave in the lower hybrid resonance. And basically this, um, this um, fast oscillation uh, showed some spurious character because they were not um, 
they did not have wavelengths or lengths uh, of the order of the expected wavelength, the physical wavelengths in the problem. And also they were of the order of the mesh size. So uh, by applying a predictive refinement in these regions, we were able to mitigate the effect of these, um, um, yeah, so these um, oscillations in the solution. So using this code, we were able to com uh, combine it with the existing um, routines for plasma transport modeling, which uh, deal with the treatment of electron uh, modeling and also the ion and neutral modeling. And uh, by solving iteratively with a time margin scheme and coupling the wave module with the uh, plasma transport module, we were able to obtain a uh, self-consistent or solutions towards self-consistency of the total plasma transport and electromagnetic variables. And we we understood that the um, these two variables or these two problems are directly correlated and we can see uh, specific uh, details of that in the solution. So we improve a lot our understanding of the operation of these thrusters. And at Onera, uh, during one of my uh, my um, uh, research stays, uh, we were able to make experiments and perform a validation campaign with more numerical solutions. And we compared, so here, for instance, sorry, you can see the vacuum chamber with the thruster operating inside. And um, basically, we obtained solutions of the plasma parameters uh, in very good agreement with the uh, experimental results. However, we also find found some uh, limitation of our model, and uh, that we we really uh, you know it gave us some paths for future improvements that were very useful. And finally, I show you here some uh, Petram uh, simulations. Uh, we've just started, uh, but basically we are trying to solve the same problem here in 3D with a uniform tetrahedral mesh uh, with nether-like elements of order two. And uh, well, we are seeing that we need a further refinement in the specific regions close to resonances. And uh, we are trying to tackle that with different methods. So concluding, uh, I showed you a, directly, a direct application of MFEM to the modeling of space plasma thrusters. We develop a 2D, 2D axisymmetric electromagnetic simulation code based on the mixed uh, finite elements, which is capable first of solving the electromagnetic uh, wave solutions in this kind of uh, thrusters and also estimating absorption. And also uh, we provided, uh, I mean, a methodology to obtain a predictive mesh refinement based on the plasma magnetic properties. Uh, this allowed us to obtain first couple simulations of the ECR thruster uh, by coupling it with a, trans a plasma transport code and to obtain first validation uh, of this model with real experiments, which resulted in very good agreement in many plasma variables and also thruster performances. And finally, um, we were able to obtain some solutions, but we are trying to uh, further refine our methodology with the 3D uh, uh, simulation platform Petram. I mean, Petram is also capable of solving in 2D and 2D axisymmetric, but we wanted to uh, compare first with 3D. So thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate, hesitate to, to ask me. Thank you, Alvaro, for this very nice talk. Um, let me open the door for questions. Anyone from the audience have any questions? Thank you. So the question is, what are your boundary conditions at the opening of the thruster? Yeah, so um, currently uh, we have, uh, the, there are two possibilities for this. We can impose perfect electric conducting or because in general, um, our thrusters are tested, sorry, let me show you. Our sure. thrusters are tested in, in facilities. So we would use a uh, conducting uh, surface, but also we can use a perfect magnetic conductor, although this is not the best approach. We want to implement a perfectly match layer uh, routine mm -hmm. in order to adapt properly. However, for our case, it's not so critical 
because um, the electromagnetic wave uh, cannot propagate out of the domain because it's bounded by so many uh, surfaces. So generally in electromagnetic problems, you don't have so many bounding surfaces limiting the, the wave propagation. So here you can see that the electromagnetic power is deposited at the resonance, and then it propagates, but here there is a cutoff. Uh, there is a resonance, another cutoff right here. So almost nothing can be straight in this kind of configuration. Okay. Could you, sorry, could you go back to previous or next slide? I'm to show where you had the pictures on, yeah, here. So on the, in the plot, the capital L, that small region, is that your thruster and the rest is just open space? Is that the idea or? Yep, that's it. Uh, yeah, our you... thrusters are very small. This uh, this thruster is uh, order one centimeter and two centimeters in length. So one centimeter radius, two centimeters long. Do you get any funny behavior at the non-convexity of the domain? Over here, you mean? Yeah, yeah, because the domain is not convex. Like sometimes it's it gets kind of funny. So do do you, do you have any issues with that or? Uh, with my simulations, I don't get any issue for the moment. But I can I can predict that there can be issues in I mean in 3D I would expect some because at the end if you have uh, corners but I, I you mean you mean this region over here and well, from which standpoint do uh, you mean from the uh, wave problem standpoint or from the plasma transport standpoint? Like I know that sometimes solutions to these equations uh, at the no sort of close to the non-convexity of the domain can blow up or can have some other funny behavior. I think Nedelik mostly takes care of that, but yeah, like here in the uh, for the for the solution of Maxwell's equations, I didn't find any okay. um, any problem with that. With the plasma transport, there are several details that you need to take into account because this region, uh, you're not going to get so many particles. So you need to be careful with the amount of particles per cell you're, you're trying to obtain there. You need at least some resolution of the particles. Mm -hmm. okay. Or the particle in cell code, I mean, this is a, another another topic, I guess. The question is, if, if your code is, is open source and is there a repository where you can find so currently, uh, I mean, this code uh, is a collaboration of different codes. So if you mean at Thames, Thames was developed at the University Carlos III in Madrid and currently is not open source, but we are, we are thinking about it. Okay. Because maybe you would be interested in using it, I guess. Uh, I guess people will be interested. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I can I can definitely uh, try to work on that.